So last week I uploaded a video where I tried to create an exterior environment for the Oculus Quest in one hour. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check it out. You guys seem to have enjoyed it, but let's just say the feedback you provided was pretty consistent throughout. Why don't you use modular assets and you need a script? So I listened to both and did both. I'm Jonathan, this is Game Dev XR, and I'm going to show you how I created a modular warehouse environment in one hour for the Oculus Quest. Let's jump right in. Before starting, I looked online to find a timer which would stay on the screen so I could track how long was left. This was extremely useful as I wanted to make sure I wasn't spending too much time on certain things. It's also so much better than looking at my phone which would take time in itself. I started by making, making sure all the programs I was planning to use were already open. This would be Blender, Photoshop, Unreal, Textures.com. This is simply so I'm not wasting time by waiting for programs to load. And it also let me jump straight into finding textures, which is where I started the timer. I knew I wanted to create an interior environment pretty early on and thought a warehouse of some kind could be like pretty awesome to do as it could have a lot of potential and was simple enough to achieve in an hour, or at least I hoped. I began looking for textures I could use in the project, finding textures like a tiled stone floor, brick walls, and even some windows. I also downloaded some metal textures as I wanted to do some more than do something more than just a floor, walls and a roof. The goal was to use two texture atlases with a resolution of 512 by 512 since that's best handled on the quest. One would contain the tiling textures and the second would contain more materials like metal windows and air vents. For example, I created both of these atlases by creating a 512 by 512 image in Photoshop and enabled grid snapping. This is so I can quickly bring in the textures and snap them in, snap them together. Just makes it a little bit easier than fiddling around with smaller movements. It's useful for getting a rough idea of texture resolution as well, as I know a quarter of the atlas will have a resolution of 256 by 256. This is super useful for the tiling texture trim sheet, because then I then know that each texture is also square. Saving up both atlases from Photoshop, I jump over to Blender to begin modeling. I started this by creating a scale reference. This is just a cube set to 0.4 in the X and Y axis with a height of 1.8 in the Z axis. My Blender is set to meters, so I know if I do this, it will match the default height of a player in Unreal, which is 180 centimeters in height. So doing this lets me scale assets more accurately through Blender which means I don't need to rescale them later on in Unreal. With the little guy made, I started working on the floor mesh. To do this, I created a plane, which was set to four by four meters and subdivided. Deleting three of the faces, I unwrapped the remaining face and then rotated it around 90 degrees to create a non-tiling four by four mesh. I, cr I could have done this with one plane, but wanted to keep the pivot point in the center and it seemed fast enough in the end. The reason for doing this was to reduce repetition across the scene without scaling up the mesh and lowering the texture quality at the same time. If you do this, don't forget to merge the vertices so they're not all separated. To create the wall, I used another plane. This time though, it was set to four by six meters as I wanted the roof to be quite a bit higher than what it would have been if I'd done a four by four. I applied the second material to this mesh so I could use the bricks from the first and the windows from the second. While doing this, I noticed that the wall looked pretty good with the concrete across the bottom, which was just an accident, accident of the UVs. So I made a slice and extruded it out a bit, just so we could keep that concrete in there and had a little lip to the floor. Just added a little, little bit more detail, which broke up the scene quite nicely. To try and break up the scene, I started working on a metal walkway. This was another plane, which was set to two by four meters. I originally downloaded a metal texture which could be used as a floor, but forgot to add it to one of the atlases. So I quickly jumped back over to Photoshop and add it in. I had to do this by moving the air vents over to make more room. I then just resaved the texture and re-uploaded to reloaded it into Blender so I would so it would update. Then I just needed to unwrap and unwrap the plane and align the UV, same as I've been doing with everything else. In the end it worked out pretty well and it didn't look too bad either. After this, I realized I didn't have anything to hold the walkway up once it was in the scene or to make it look like it would be held up. So I started to model an I-beam 
This was just a cube which I put some cuts on and extruded inwards. It looked pretty well for what an I-beam is and then I just unwrapped it the same way as every other mesh that I've done so far. Just making sure that the UVs were flat and then aligned up to the texture atlas. I tried not to make the UVs too large, so keeping too, too many of them connected to one. Because if I did that I would have to scale it down in the UV island and that would change the scale of the metal texture. So in the end I think it came it came out looking pretty well, especially for what it needed to be in the size that it was. So far I'm just under halfway through and decide to check over all the meshes. All I'm looking for here is that the pivot points are in the correct location, as this is crucial for snapping assets in Unreal, otherwise they'll be out of line when it comes to placing them in the world. For exporting to Unreal, I use a plugin called FPX Bundle, which is free. It allows me to batch export every mesh I've selected within Blender to Unreal Engine, all at the same time. It also means I don't have to reposition every mesh to be 0, zero world space before doing so. Good. This is where the scene starts coming together. With the meshes in Unreal, I change the grid snapping to 100. This works extremely well just to keep all the meshes aligned. It also made sure there was no gaps between the meshes and made the whole scene easier to construct. It just made it a little bit easier for organization as well, as we didn't have to do fiddly little movements to try and get them to line up. I also start adding the I-beams into the scene as a way just to make it a bit more natural. It worked really well, except there was an issue with scale. I found that I made them too big. So later on, I just go back through and then scale them down a little bit. Do you have any ideas for a challenge or videos that you would like to see? If you do, then don't forget to leave a comment down below. And if you're not subscribed already to do so, that way you won't miss any of them. And you can stay up to date with all the latest challenges and tutorials that come out on the channel. So I now have just over 20 minutes left and realize I need to start adding more details to the scene if I want to make it look half good. One of the ways I decided to do this was by using the I-beam mesh and positioning it where the ceiling slash, slash roof would be, creating some support beams. Again, I'm just using the snap tool to position them in place and then I disabled it so I could freely rotate and move them between the beams that was already there. This was just to make the scene look a little bit more natural according to real world warehouses that I've seen in the past. It was a little bit time consuming, but I think it was worth it in the end as it made it look a lot more realistic to the end result. But this is where I realized I needed to make the meshes for the roof. I did a quick Google search for warehouse roofs as I wanted to something close to the real world. Since we already had textures for the windows, I decided to just reuse them and to create a single 2x4 mesh, which could act as a window on its own. This worked pretty well, but if I had more time, I would have made some of them look open and have them at different angles rotated within the scene to break it up just a little bit more and allow light to pass through the roof. Because of this, I had to actually just delete some of the roof meshes just to allow some light to pass through. I wanted the roof to look like all metal and realized I didn't have a texture which, could, which I could use for it. Instead of creating another atlas, since I just wanted to keep with the two, I went back into Photoshop and deleted the air vents since I didn't have time to use them. I then went back to CG Textures and downloaded a new metal material, which I added to the Photoshop file, saved it out, and then re-imported into Blender. This was just so I could use it to model a 4x4 mesh for the roof. I did the same thing I did with the floor and split the mesh while rotating some segments. I also extruded the middle bit. I kind of wish I didn't do that now because it doesn't look too good in the end result, but it didn't look too bad for what it was. With the two, mesh, the two new meshes in Unreal, I just brought them into the scene, again using grid snapping, I just placed them there where the roof should be. I proceeded to do the same thing with the windows, but realized that if I wanted the windows to be one mesh away from the wall, so it was symmetrical down the middle of the building, then I would need to change the meshes around it for the main roof. This took me longer to fix than I'd like to admit, as I was trying to position them in different ways, but then I just realized that I could scale the mesh in the center, or lengthways, by uh, I think it was 0.25 units in Unreal. That way it would actually 
provide the two windows down either side while the roof in the middle. And then I just simply went on to do a light build to try and get some nicer lighting. At this point, I realized with five minutes left that the light was bleeding through. So I just, I selected every mesh in the scene and set it to use two-sided static lighting while also increasing the light map resolution. Since I had two minutes, two and a half minutes left, I thought I could use this time to make a railing as I didn't really have any time to jump back into Photoshop and bring the air vents back in. I probably could have looking back at it, but I'm kind of glad that I put the railings in as it just broke up the scene a little bit more and allowed something that your eyes could look at in the final build. So here I do one last light build before actually building it to the headset. This went over the one hour time limit but it was worth it in the end as it made stuff look pretty nice. And we basically built an entire scene with six static meshes, two texture atlases and two materials. So I think for the overall result, I'm quite pleased with what I was able to get done in that time limit. Although when I brought it into the Oculus Quest, there was one main issue, which was the roughness value of the materials as it made everything look super shiny and smooth. This was something I originally didn't think about while in Unreal. It didn't even cross my mind, but looking at it, I see where the issues were. So although the timer had stopped, I wanted to see how it would look with these set to a roughness value of one. So I just jumped back over to Unreal and set them to a value of one, do another light build, which was kind of unnecessary, but jumping back into the Oculus Quest, like it made such a difference. Like the end result I was so happy with just because of how well it looked. There was definitely some issues still in the scene. For example, you can see a black square on the black the back wall. I'm not too sure what was causing that, but I think it's something to do with light, light build. But uh, apart from that, I think the scene worked out relatively well. There's still some blurry textures on the bricks but for the fact that we're doing this on mobile, I'm still quite pleased with the end result. Thinking about this now, I could actually disable mip maps within Unreal Engine and that might actually sharpen up the textures. This is just something to remember for next time. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, then don't forget to hit like and subscribe. If you didn't, hit that thumbs down button. But until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then.